All right, so to start off with this one, if we're going to graph this first equation, we're going to start with our y-intercept at 4. Our slope is negative 3. Remember, slope is always rise over 1. What's invisible there? It's negative 3 over 1. So our rise is 3, our run is 1. I'm at the top here though, so I'm not going to be able to rise, so I'm going to drop down how many? Three. We're going to drop down 3, and we're going to run over 1. Does that give us a negative slope? So then we can be confident we went the right way. I'm going to go down 3 more and over 1 more just to get another point on there. And if you have anything that can act as a straight edge, maybe your notebook. And then we're going to graph the other one and see where they cross. So we're going to start down at negative 2 for our y-intercept. Our slope on this one is a positive 3. So again, it's a 3 of a, for rise and a 1 run, but this is going to be a positive slope. We know our solution is where our two lines are meeting, where they're intersecting. And what point is that? Looks to me like it's 1 comma 1. So that is our solution. Now, just because there are three other examples here with graphs does not necessarily mean that they are going to be the easiest to solve with graphing. We could graph this, but I wouldn't. I would use substitution for this. As soon as I see this one equation is just x equals negative 3, I want to take that one and put it into the other equation. I know that video we just saw is kind of silly, but it, that teacher at the end was like showing you how to plug something into a wall, trying to get that visual in your mind that you can plug something in, you can substitute it in. I'm going to rewrite this as y is equal to negative 3 plus 2. I just used the second equation and substituted it into the first equation and I'm going to be able to solve for y. Who sees what I did there? Show me hands. Do you see why I think that this is easier than graphing on this one? I mean, you could graph it, but I actually like doing substitution. You'll find as we practice these, you'll get one way you like the most. This is my favorite way. And I'm going to get y is equal to negative 1. But I still need the x, don't I? So I'm going to go back to the same first equation, and I'm going to put in negative 1 where the y was. I want to get the x by itself, and I get negative 3 is equal to x. So my x-y pair is negative 3, negative 1. I took this one here where I took these two equations and I subbed the, first, the second one into the first. I solved for y. And then I went back to the equations and I took that negative one and I substituted it in for the y. And I found my x. That means if I drew these lines on this graph, 
they would be crossing right here. So let's graph it and see. Let's see if it works. We're going to use but two methods to solve this one. Our first equation is y equals x plus 2. My slope on this one is 1 over 1 because there's an invisible 1 in front of that x. So we're going to be going up by 1 and over 1. And it's also saying x is equal to negative 3. That means any place on this graph for the second line would be at negative 3. It's going to be an undefined line straight up and down. And we see that it does cross through for both of those, the place that we calculated by using substitution first. <coughs> Excuse me. This is where I give you a true confession as your math teacher. One of the mistakes I know I make a lot is I forget if the line is a zero slope or an undefined slope when it's just one variable equals the other. I always confuse them. I have to think about it hard. So when I'm doing this, I usually have to picture an XY table and what would that look like with all of the X's equal to negative three. And that's how I do this. For me, doing this part is easier. For some of you, you look at this and you're like, duh, that's an undefined line. I don't have enough to think about it. That means for you, it might have been easier to start this one with graphing, right? It's just going to be important for us to practice both. When I look at 3 and 4, neither of these are in y equals mx plus b. They're in standard form. That doesn't mean it's necessarily easy to graph. So I'm going to hold off on those because I've got an activity tomorrow where we're going to learn to remind ourselves how to move things around in equations. Let's spend time with our last problem for today, doing number five. These are definitely set up to be easy to solve with substitution. If this is equal to y and this is equal to y, then I can set these up equal to each other. We did a little bit of this when we were working together, um, working together separately last week when we were in our Zoom. If this equals y and this equals y, then the two of them must equal each other. Right? So now I'm just going to simplify and get my like terms together. Not a lot of room to work on this paper. I end up with x equals 2. I'm going to go back to the original equation, and I'm going to pick whichever one is easiest to find y. I think the second equation is easy, easiest because it doesn't have multiplication, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as y is equal to 2 minus 3. y is equal to negative 1. That means the answer to this is 2 comma negative 1. 
I'm putting my X in place and my Y in place, and this is my solution. Could we have graphed those? Pretty easily. They're in y equals mx plus b form. 